Okay, welcome to our uh, town council meeting. We'll call it to order and rise with the grievance. The United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilor Atkinson. Here. 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 And I, I see I see none on line either, correct? Okay. Mayor, we're going to add an item to consent, please. To the consent agenda, okay. So, well, Mayor's update. I don't have anything to update. Uh, so, yes. So, we're, so, we'll take a motion to add. I would like to add a item to the consent agenda for the Timberland Golf Course Men's Club donation. Okay. Th thank you. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. All right. All right. So move. So we'll add that. That'll be, we'll make that number four, I guess. That's the consent. Okay. So meeting agenda. All right. So we're at our consent agenda. Look at that. Uh, we have the four items. Uh, waiving rental fee for Berlin's Upbeat 2024 pancake breakfast. And then turn it down. Approve waiving the lease fee. Any... Uh, Appropriate the funds for the computer equipment account, special grants and donations fund, and number four, the uh, Timberland uh, Golf Course Men's Club donated a thousand thirteen hundred dollars towards the repair of the Easy Go car. I'm just the goosenator. We're going to accept the Timberland Golf Course Men's Club donation of $2,500 towards a, a, a trade of the 1998 part for 2018 club car carry all cart. Wow, that sounds pretty fancy. What do we, what do we have going there? Trying to stop it. Oh, I we can't. Hey. No, it's okay, Dad. Um, if you can hear me, you have to uh, mute yourself. With Zoom? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we have our consent agenda. We'll take a motion. I move we accept the consent agenda as presented. Thank you. Second on that. Second. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, so moved. On to our new business. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Welcome. So the first item on the agenda is uh, the recreational trails grant. We had a lot of discussion the last meeting, and Mr. Mahoney worked on some of your recommendations. And uh, I'll have Jim just give you a quick overview of the changes and uh, opportunity for you to ask questions or clarification. Jim, over to you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> last meeting, we had some feedback on concerns of uh, some of the property owners in the neighborhood about <clears throat> specifically the um, improvements to the two parking spaces that are on the Stantec Road right away next to one of the houses on Spruce Brook, and also to the idea of putting in a uh, okay. pedestrian pathway along Spruce Brook Road. So basically, we've uh, dropped those both of those items from the scope. 
We will try to do some uh, pavement markings for safety um, when we repave Spruceburg Road, which is planned to be done this year, I believe. And um, <clears throat> but other than that, the, the scope is the same. This would be a cooperative application with Middletown. Middletown will take the lead. Um, our portion is about 250,000. We have a 20% match. So our match would be 50,000 coming from payment in lieu of open space. Okay, <clears throat> thanks Jim. So all those things we talked about, I, I just have one question on that where we decided not to pave that by the gentleman's house there off of Spruce Brook, right? The yes, small yes. parking lot. Yes. Um, we, I mean, I've gone by there a few times since and seen, you know, I don't know, maybe three or four cars parked there sometimes. Seems like a little bit of an intrusion onto that man's property. But what, what do, you know, I don't, I don't know, what do we do to control that? Is there anything we can do to control that? I know we're not going to pave it now, but what, what do we, I mean, I know that's town property there, but still it's. Uh, if I may, Mayor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just uh, and thank you for taking the time to rework some of this. I spoke with um, him this morning. Um, I know we're not going to be paving that area, but I think it's, it's so close to the existing parking, the gentleman's driveway, if you will. I mean, it's basically butted up next to each other. It's right there. And um, there were several cars that. Um, were there parked at one time, perhaps we can put some sort of a sign up, um, you know, two cars only, you know, or you get towed or something like that. I mean, they're piling them back to back and two and three wide, every bit of, you know, three wide. Um, and that's was brought to my attention after we spoke earlier today. So, um, and we went, when we went there, it, even we yes. pulled in with three cars it, and, and it was, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's, dangerous. it's very intrusive on his property. Absolutely. I don't, I don't know. So maybe we can do something there. I don't know, you know, yeah. if the fence is an issue, you know, I, we're not going to pave it, which I'm thrilled about. And I'm sure <laughs> that uh, Cody will be thrilled about that as well. Yeah. Um, but we probably need to do some posting, something. Maybe posting. There. Well, I, I check with the PD on this one. Yeah. You can put some sign that says no parking. I, I wonder if we should just do that. I think it might not be a bad idea. And <laughs> I know that it may not sit with you will, real well, but I mean, it is right there. And the weather hasn't even started to be nice. You know, uh, I just foresee having some real big issues over there. It's also da it, it's it, very it's dangerous, dangerous to pull out when there. When you come up over the hill there the hill. and there's nowhere to K turn, you, so you're backing into the street. There's no other way around it. It is. It's dangerous. You could restrict it with a couple of boulders or. Oh, you could do that. Rocks, yeah. You know, somehow more natural looking than putting yeah. a sign in the guy's front lawn. You could do that too, maybe. Put some nice, you know, maybe they can move some boulders out of the woods there. There's probably some boulders. Yeah, that, that can be, uh, down, you know, down property. And no, and no part. I mean, it's not Money. worth the aggravation or the safety issue for two cars to park there, in my opinion. It just, it's, I don't know. It's, it's just, just, it's, yeah, it's good. not, I don't think it's very fair to him. Nope. Have there been crashes there or I don't know, know about though. crashings I mean I'd have to have the PD do some sort of a yeah. report for us uh, but it is you know and, and as the weather gets nicer and you know um, people are out and and they encroach people don't behave themselves there's literally there is no space there at all to park two cars and you've got three and a half or three wide and one off to the side just behind the third vehicle i'm you know does he have any issues with people actually parking on his property or no i don't know i would have to ask him but i'm sure you know they i'm sure they've k turned on his driveway you know you really can't, it's, it's you, a bad spot you can't get out of there without kind of touching his property it's really not you, accessible. you have to kind of back up onto his driveway to get out of we there. had to yeah we, we had, had to we to back up yeah. and we were only what <laughs> We were three, three cars. Three cars. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a very safe spot either. It really isn't because they're coming mm -hmm. down the hill on Spruce yep. Book. It's there's kind an, of. There's an entry there to get to the trail. To the trail. But but they can walk up from Pistol oh, Creek. They can walk down from Pistol, Pistol Creek. Creek. I mean, there's yeah. plenty of parking. Yeah. Which is if they want to walk, <laughs> let them walk. I mean, you know. Yeah, take a, take a little bit longer walk. But that's what we're talking about, right, on the um, 
on spruce on brook, spruce when brook. they pave it we're going to make it a little the bridge is going to be wider the bridge there. will be wider we'll make a little lane they could walk down from spruce brook with, uh, from uh pistol creek pistol well, creek a safe way for yeah. people to walk yes because it's not safe now it right. really is now it affect the grant if we restrict it no we could i think we can do anything we want i mean what do you think this Jim? is our proposal yeah well, yeah, again, we're not proposing any improvements as part of the grant. So yeah. I think this is kind of a side conversation. A I think, yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, you can okay. make your own decisions, you know, just to note that the the driveway for that property encroaches on the town property. So okay. the driveway is really our property. Um, his driveway? Thing, Go figure yes. that. I, what, how, does how, does he, how does he get into his house without the driveway? I mean, he just bought that house a couple of years ago. How does that happen? Yeah. They can't all be town property up to the. Unless there's been an easement that's attached. Isn't to wasn't isn't his a garage is in the his back. garage is it, uh, is underneath the house to the right of the entranceway. So, he would have no driveway to his house if he didn't go over town property. That doesn't seem right. I don't know. Yeah, what do we buy? It happens happen. a lot. Well, no, I'm yeah. sure it does, but I mean, you know, perhaps we should. I mean, could be father uh... clause did. I mean, I don't know. I think we should move forward with the grant. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think I think that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And no. all the other adjustments yeah. that you made, we're very happy with those, and we appreciate you doing that. Um, and I just like to make one more comment because last night while we were here, uh, for the budget, and we were and we talked about this briefly today, the monies that we put up for these grants, okay, do not um, get spent unless these projects are approved. And I think there was a little misunderstanding maybe last night. Mm. Remember Mark, I right. mentioned. Yep. So if we have to come up with $50,000, if the project is not awarded us and we don't get the grant, we're not losing the $50,000 that we right. have to come up with. Right. So yeah. I, I just want to be clear on that. Okay. When, one other thing I would just mention about the trailhead is that, you know, we could <clears throat> relocate the trailhead over to Lamentation Drive and people could park on the street there. Um, you oh. know, because there's the gate there where yeah. Stantec comes out there as well. So oh. we can, if that's something you're interested in, I can talk to. Oh. You know, we can Connecticut talk Forest about Park. that. Yeah. Let's let's yeah. talk Connecticut about Forest it and take Park a look at it. Does the maintains all the Blue Blaze trails in the state? So if that's something we're interested in, I can I oh. certainly talk to them about that. Oh, that might be good. We can move forward. We yeah. can, you know, we can yeah. talk about yeah. that. Okay, that's good. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Thank that's you. Good. Thank good you. Suggestion. Okay. Sorry. No, no, no. That's yeah, good. That's about that, but we waited. Good. Let's do it right. Okay. Yeah. Thank so you. what else we got? So we we pretty much got everything we everything that we had asked. We, we were asked for. We appreciate you doing that. that large Shannon. parking lot, the elimination of of that you know uh, pathway in front of that farmhouse. Um, and and we we could do something with the ATV issue probably yes, there we, too. We talked about. We can talk about that after though. Separate. That's you know. That's separate. This way we move forward with the yeah. the grant. To get yeah. that in yeah it's a lot of okay. hard, hard work's been done on that yeah okay we good folks anyone else we good okay we'll go ahead and take a motion move to authorize the town manager to participate in a grant application to be submitted by the town of middletown for lamentation mountain slash pistol creek area for a recreational trails grant that will include improvements in berlin an estimated cost of two hundred fifty thousand dollars and if the town contribute fifty thousand in cash match for the Berlin portion of the project from the fee in lieu of open space account. Thank you. Second on that. I'll second that. Thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, we'll vote on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Jim. Thanks, Thank Jim. You, Jim. I know you worked hard on that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, Jim. Good night now. Agenda item number two is the uh, $750,000 that we received uh, help of the legislative contingent from the state for the police station renovation. Uh, it will be administered by the Department of Emergency Services and Public Protection. Uh, this is to, uh, we receive the paperwork, so I'm ready to submit, and then um, for you to formally approve, appropriate the funds for the police station renovation. Yes, thank you. So we're all up to speed on this, right? This was going to get a nice grant that we got from the state. And uh, thank you, Donna, and our state reps for working on this. <clears throat> um, so this is great. This will go towards the cost of our renovation. So if there's no other questions, we'll go ahead and take a motion. Move to appropriate the $750,000 state urban grant to the police station renovation grant 
account in the police station construction fund pending approval by the board of finance. Thank you. Second on that. I'll second that. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Agenda item number three is a proposal from Mr. Simons, who has gone out and got some pricing for our diesel, He's saving us about 70 cents a gallon for a total of 22750 the lowest bidder. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. You're, You're here man. tonight for some more punishment. Didn't you have enough last night? <laughs> <laughs> I promise you we won't be here as late as we were last night. <laughs> we'll be earlier tonight. Then. If you have any questions, um, obviously Jim is here. Right? Yeah. Uh, no, it, no, I don't think so. That's it's great. Good. It sounds good. So, yeah, with that, we're going to take a motion. And to award the 2024-25 diesel contract to Tunxus or of Meriden, Connecticut, utilizing Capital Regional Council government bid number 760. Okay, second on that. I'll second that. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so moved. Great. Thank you. Agenda item number four is... Uh, for us to apply for a grant um, for the uh, senior center bus. Hmm. And uh, Tina Doyle has been working on this, as you probably remember a couple of years ago. She applied for a grant and um, received the full amount with the help of uh, some town match. And we have $30,000 in the AD improvements account that we want to use. And then uh, it'll be going to Tasca Ford in the manufacturer prices of approximately 125000 So the remainder will be coming from the DOT grant. Wow, oh, that's great. Nice job, uh, Tina. Cool crowd. Yeah, excellent. Okay, any questions on this? All right, we'll go ahead and uh, I guess we've got a couple motions there, Trent. Move to approve a transfer of $30,000 from the ADA improvements account from Senior Center Van account both in the CNR fund pending approval by the Board of Finance. Second on that. I'll second that. All right. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so moved. For two. Three. Move to authorize the Senior Center Director to apply for the Connecticut DOT Section 5310 Fiscal Year 23 Enhanced Mobility of Seniors and Individuals with Disabilities Assistant Grant and if awarded to deposit the funds into the senior center van account. Thank you, second on that? Second that. If there's no other comments, we'll go ahead and vote on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, motion carries. Great, thank you. Agenda item number five. Um, this is a recommendation from Parks and Recreation Commission. We host the Nutmeg Games with Middletown, and historically we have waived 100% of the fees associated with it, and uh, Parks and Rec uh, is recommending this time we waive only 50% of the fee. Um, towns, you have a schedule. We have been waiving a lot of fees lately. Yes. So uh, yes. I think this is the right thing to do, hence it's not in on consent. So uh, this waiver, we are there asking for approval for that. Yeah, that seems fair, right? And it's only 50%, so we've... Uh... Had these folks in town for a while, right? A long time. So that's that's yeah. good. Any I idea what it costs our grounds or our people to deal with them? Uh, I don't. I'm here. Oh, there's uh, Jen. Yes. Um, they are only wa asking to waive the field fees. Every year they pay the grounds workers that come and groom the fields for their baseball and games and the grounds workers that do the trash and open the gates at Scalise and handle everything else there. So they do always pay full price for our grounds overtime workers. Right. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Any other questions? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and take a motion. Move to approve waiving 50% of the estimated field usage fees, not to exceed the amount of $1,840 for the 2024 Nutmeg State Games be held at Scalise Field and Beretta Field from July 19th to October 4th, 2024. You second on that? I'll second that. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, we'll vote on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
so moved. Great, thank you. Then item number six is a uh, early order chemical program for Timberland Gulf. Carl, I'll see you there. Um, so this is a um, something that we do every year. If you order early enough, they give a significant rebate hmm. the, from the manufacturer. Sal, you want to add anything about the program, please? Sure. Thank you, Rose. How you doing, Council? Um, hey. So, like Ferocious said, it's a yearly program offered in March by uh, Harold's and Heritage. We order it now, but pay for it in July with the FY25 budget. Um, but we try to take advantage of it now because we get uh, good incentives and good discounts on um, brand name products. Um, you know, we like to use brand name products because you get a good guarantee on them. Um, you know what you're getting, um, but also uh, you have the experience of of uh, of using those products and knowing how it works at Timberland. So with that and the knowledge of their reps who we're very fond of, um, we liked to, um, you know, get authorization to purchase the chemicals uh, through them with the early early uh, order program. Okay. Thanks, Saul. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, we've done this before. So every year. We do it all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any questions, folks? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and take a motion. Move to waive the bidding procedure and purchase chemicals from Heralds and Heritage Landscape Supply Group in the amount not to exceed $124,914.20. This is in the best interest of the town of Berlin. The chemical purchases are through the early order program of BASF. Ingenta, Bayer, Cpro, Spervertva, chemical companies. Thank you. Second. I'll second that. Uh, <clears throat> hearing no other questions, comments, we'll go ahead and uh, vote on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sal. Agenda item number seven, the final agenda item of the day. <laughs> is uh, to set a public hearing to discuss the ordinance to fund the actually determined employee contribution. At the February 6th ordinance committee meeting, the ordinance committee recommended to the town council to move forward with this ordinance. But before we do that, we got to schedule a public hearing. Uh, we would like to schedule it at the next council meeting, which is March 19th at 7 p.m. Okay, yeah, we talked about this already. So there's no other comments or questions. We'll go ahead and take a motion. Move to schedule a public hearing on March 19th, 2024 at 7 p.m. to discuss an ordinance that requires the town fund the actuarially, actuarially determined employer contribution ADEC for each active defined benefit pension plan. Second on that. Second that. Thank you. Uh, hearing no other comments, uh, we'll uh, look forward to our public hearing. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, so moved. Okay, on to appointments. Um, we have two. If, if I could uh, just, if we could just hold on to the second one for the Golf Commission and put that on the next agenda, Kate, yeah. that's okay. And... Uh, but we can go ahead and uh, take a nomination for the Cemetery Commission. I would like to nominate Andra Millard for the Cemetery Commission. Thank you. Um, any other nominations for this position? Hearing none, we'll close the nominations. All those in favor of uh, Ms. Millard? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Congratulations, Andra. We'll hold off on Lucas for a moment until next meeting, and then we will. Where are we at? Oh, man. My goodness gracious. <laughs> we bold of us. Something's, <laughs> something's not right. That's all right. <laughs> we know, yeah. The only one who complains about that. <laughs> Others don't. All right, very quickly. Um, just keeping you informed with the Silla, Silver Island. Oh, yeah. The uh, So the last time we met, we had asked them to come up with a restoration plan. They were giving a little bit pushback. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we got attorney Coppola and the whole group in the town hall 
have the conversation, explain what needs to be done. And they have, uh, with some pushback, agreed to come up with a plan to restore some of the trees that were removed. Uh, but that's the homeowners association, right? Association, yeah. Right. So it, it it's it's happening, but uh, this is just an update that uh, oh, appreciate making that, yeah. some progress on. Good, that's great. Um, you probably recall um, we have the town received, uh, uh, and we are going to continue to receive uh, money from the opioid settlements, and uh, there's a townwide committee consisting of me and. Um, uh, CCHD, the superintendent, uh, the chief of police, uh, Jamie from social services, to figure out how what's the best use of these funds. This is opioid remediation. Uh, it's mostly for education and uh, do different things for remediation and um, help people in the community. So what we decide to do is rather than create a whole new process, uh, use some of the existing channels to uh, get the word out. So one of the things we, there were three things we decided to do immediately. Uh, one is uh, with CCHD, they more to fund a recovery coach, a por portion of that person's salary to dedicated to help the community with um, counseling and advising and getting the word out. So I have something that they created uh, and this will mostly be distributed to all the adults, the motels, and the PD will carry this. You know, I need to no. talk to the chief about that. Mm. And then uh, remember when when no. they run across someone who uh, uh, you know who needs assistance, uh, the idea is to educate them. They're not there to arrest these people; uh, is to help them. It's a good Samaritan laws in the back here, and try to get them the help that they need. So uh, that that has happened, and then uh, the the PD had requested a replacement for naloxone cases for cruisers, you know, for them to carry it around with them whenever there is a issue when they run into something, so that they have it immediately with them. So we invested about twenty six hundred dollars in that very small amount. Uh, I am going. The third one is we engaged the um, Berlin High School students to create a video um, mm -hmm. about awareness, um, about being left out, loneliness, and there's a, the, there are social media. They did a really nice job creating a YouTube video. I'm going to send you the link, oh, nice. and we're going to send it out to all the schools. It's created by the kids and also one of the police officers. Oh, nice. And it, it's about life and how everybody feels and you're not alone and feel free to reach. So it, it's really nicely done. Uh, they did it on their own and we're going to get it out to all the school children. And then also uh, I'm thinking perhaps we can get it out on social media, get it on Berlin Citizen with a QR code and everybody can hear out. It's all local kids doing it. So you'll, you'll, I'll send you the link so that you can take a look at it. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Brian is looking for a really good keynote speaker to come and talk to the students, you know, pack them all in a auditorium and get someone who is powerful, who can really yeah. educate them and understand because it is an epidemic in the country. And, you know, no getting these funds so far, we have received $33,000 and we're going to continue to get uh, amounts each year until like 20, 30 something. Uh, so it's ongoing. And we'll come up with new programs to help the community. Um, remember that meeting I went to? Remember it was last minute? Hill. Yeah, at Rocky Hill. So they're doing another one. I saw some email. I don't know if they picked the date yet. I want to say it's a little bit later in March. But what we had come up with at the last meeting, all the towns, right, Weathersfield, Rocky Hill, we were there. Newington, I think, was there. There's some group, I think they're just going to do a Zoom thing, obviously. I want to say they're out on the West Coast somewhere, but they, they've got some really, uh, a, lot, a lot of it was for like housing for these folks. Treatment, obviously, is what we're trying to want to spend a lot of this opioid settlement money on. But so if could you could you just maybe check with the town manager, make sure, because somebody should come from Berlin, like social services, yourself. Who's doing this? Who's organizing? Um, 
it, it's 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 the towns. It's it's like the social service folks in Weathersfield and Rocky Hill, Newington, and and you know Berlin is included too. I don't think Cromwell was Cromwell there too. Maybe Cromwell. Cromwell is not part of. They're not part of it. No. So it's just uh, it's it's the it's our health district. I think yeah. it's sort of all stem yeah. from that. Okay. But we we just kind of been doing it in Rocky Hill because I think the mayor there just you know sort of said that you can use yeah. our town I'll be happy hall. Happy to reach out. Just reach out and find out when the next one is because I know we we talked about a couple of groups that seem to have some great programs for treatment and then these folks that are in treatment a lot of them unfortunately are homeless and they need some short term housing to get them back on their feet. So there were some programs out west that seemed to be working, which we were all excited to hear about. So. And so it's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So I didn't, I saw some email, but I don't think they picked a date yet. Yeah. CCHD is part of it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You could probably ask, uh, was it Ann? Who? And, yeah. yeah. She was part, she was there the other I don't day. know why they don't keep us informed. I know. I don't know why. I don't know why they just keep sending it to me. Like that's, remember the mayor just called me that day. I didn't even know. They just want the mayors to be part of it. Well, no, because they had all their no, they had all their treatment people there. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. No, I want us. To, our social service people need to be there. Okay. You know, that's who's yeah. implementing the I'll plan. I'll see who should be the end. Yeah, who can be part of it. Yeah. Okay. So that that'd be good because I, I, it was a you know it's a good group. So anyway, uh, the next one I just uh, it copies for all of you. Take a look at it. This is a letter from Lorraine Stubb, who wrote to the council a few days ago. For the Worthington Meeting House, um, yes, Lorraine Stab. Sorry, and then the, um, the, the 250 there. anniversary coming. She would like you know us to think about ways we can help to restore this historic building, which is a, I think it's like a national monument. Um, so I, I don't know, Donna, if you can also see if there are avenues for to see what's available. Yeah, to actually do something in Harper today that I was. I talked at the beginning of that wasn't able to stay in the whole meeting, so we had to accomplish. Um, I'll reach out to Lorraine. I've got to speak to her. Oh, good, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so she's pretty much asking for our help. Yeah, that's great. Well, we got to say we do have to save that building somehow. Um, and then finally, just some of you may know this. We talked about it yesterday. Uh, Gail Erickson, who's the assistant finance director, is retiring in August after thirty-six years. Wow. Mm. Looking forward to. Her retirement and grandchildren, etc. So, um, we'll be looking for her replacement. That's a good run, 36 years. Is very That's good. pretty good, yeah. And I <laughs> mentioned before Cindy's retiring end of this week. That's right. 38 years, yeah. 38. Yeah. Oh, wow. okay. Well. And then we had uh, no, not you, Kate. Fran, not Kate. Hey, no, 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 you're not going anywhere. Fran. Fran yes. worked for like almost 40 years, right? That's Fran. Oh, Fran. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She was there forever. Yeah. Wow. All right. And uh, that's it. And just a reminder tomorrow, the Board of Ed budget hearing. Board of Ed budget tomorrow. And then the seven o'clock downstairs. Downstairs. Stairs, right. And then Monday and following Monday and Tuesday is the finance, uh, Board of Finance workshop. Workshops. Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Next week. Yeah. Where are those? That'll be here. I think that's here. I think those are up here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like they had them last year. So everybody's welcome to join, and it's on Zoom as well. We can't make it. Yeah, it was uh, good last night. Had some good meeting. You know, so. Good to get the perspective, and I know we all have our our books and stuff. So uh, yeah, those who didn't pick up, we have the binders. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of good information, especially um, those council members joining for the first time. There's a lot of background information that might be helpful when you're decision making. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Absolutely. So special committees. We, well, we just had our ordinance. Yeah. We have some? Oh, no. So so we had the ordinance committee. We're looking at the noise ordinance and uh, we looked at the um, the tax uh, abatement for the um, daycare. daycare folks. And the consensus was not to uh, go forward with that just based upon what we weren't really sure. Uh, well, the intent, I guess, of the legislature was to, you know, I guess, pass those savings on to the folks, but there's nothing in there to say that's going to happen. So I, I don't know. It just didn't seem like it was uh, workable to the ordinance committee. So we, we just decided not to. May I Go ask? Forward. Yes. Maybe Donna might know a little sure. bit, but we discussed about the governor had discussed this. 
Oh, recently, uh, yeah. It was unpopular to take money from K through 12 and create some funds for free k daycare. Um, I, I don't know that will move forward. There was some conversation about- Education is starting on uh, public hearings now, and I'm not on the education committee, but certainly if I hear and or think that that might be moving forward, uh, I can okay. reach back out to you. Yeah. Anything can happen. You know? Yeah. Huh. Anything. That, that that intent was to directly give the money to the parents or the those who need help. It's very expensive. Now, there's no question. Personally, I think it's the kind of forms that we need. So, but that, I, I mean, like his plan, if if you know they wanted to move the money around, at least would go right to the the parents. So it would go to them directly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> fun times. Fun times. Um, so anyway, that and special committees. Oh, that's right. You have your committee. Yes. We had huge turnout for the Mattabasset Watershed Committee. <laughs> <laughs> um, Much like we have tonight? About the same. I, a couple I, uh, people there. I prevailed on our staff, the town engineer and his assistant, to help me. And uh, I went to Ernie Kearns, yeah. who has great knowledge of the local area and the watershed. And yes. there was a commission in the 80s that Dennis served on, so he brought a lot of good background wow. to it. That's and nice. A lot of money was spent on consultants, and there's volumes written about there's a lot of problem there, but there was no solution. <laughs> and uh, it kind of faded because nobody quite knew what to do. But we kind of broke it into three objectives. One on the short term, I don't know if any of you have ever been down to the town yard during a heavy rainstorm, but it floods. <laughs> that whole area lower lane and uh, in 2016 mr simons brought that to the attention of the council and he retrieved two fuel tanks concrete vaults they meet all the environmental for above ground storage they're the right things to use he retrieved them when they reconfigured the high school and he's been keeping them safe and it kind of died so he has the funding in place i believe this is a short-term cure and his suggestion back then and now is to put a additional fueling station at the golf course on higher ground in case the yard ever becomes unserviceable, he can still fuel the equipment for emergency needs. It's a good idea. Uh, I think yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. So that's, well. that's one of our short term goals. And the other short term goals, we're going to reach out to a couple engineering firms. There's one that does a stormwater study that's required by state regulation every year for us. So they're already going to have a good handle. I'm hoping it wouldn't be very expensive for them to give us a quick overview of the pinch points, what, what could be done to relieve the issue. Um, and then an immediate goal is to look at our local regulations and try to slow the runoff down on new developments, control where the stormwater goes and require bigger buffers around the wetlands maybe. I won't go into all the engineering, but we're going to try to look at maybe some minor regulation changes could help Right. Uh, slow the water down so it doesn't become such a problem. And then in the long term, we're going to look for grants. And Newington is applying for a mega grant, $500 million to study water in the area. I know we're going to get this, but we're going to try to piggyback with them and include us in their study area because it's part of the same water basin affecting the Connecticut mm. River. So that is quite a big That's where we're going. But these gentlemen were a great help, and I want to thank you. If anybody from the council wants to add or remembers anything, I appreciate any help. Thank you. That's great. Sounds like some good solutions there to, to some stuff, problems we have. So that's great. Um, I think that's all for the special committee reports, right? Nothing else. And on, on to Councilor Communications. What do we have, folks? Anything? Any? Oh, yes. Congratulations to that. Yes, that's that's excellent. Very good. <laughs> excellent. Austin Lawrence, a whopping nine pounds. Oh. Hey, yeah. yeah. Talking He's pain here. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> excellent. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, congratulations. That's excellent. Anything else? Any other? Yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> you can't beat it. Um, just one quick thing I wanted to mention based upon last night. Uh, 
I, I was thinking back as we talked about in the budget, uh, uh, you know, uh, possibly making the uh, part-time animal control officer full-time. So I, I would just have some questions. I, I'm guessing the Board of Finance will too. This is just came in my head, but it, did we ever, so could we see, I know we talked about this a while ago, but like logs and what our full-time officer does during the day? Because we mentioned she would, if we made a part-time one full-time, she would do some things that sounded to me like, and maybe I misunderstood what was being, stuff that our full-time officer should should be doing and probably maybe is doing. I don't know, but I, I, I just yeah. want to know what she does because, quite frankly, I've, I've had, had some residents that have called for animal control and don't get a call back for several days sometimes. And I've also heard that dispatch at the police department sometimes doesn't get a hold of her, which is why, remember, we wanted her to have a police radio, but we were going to get her, I thought, a portable. I don't know, because she wasn't on the police radio system, I thought, when we talked about this a while ago. I, I don't know. Could we find out if she is or isn't? Because, I mean, that's a safety issue for me. Like, if she's not on the police radio, Band, what, who would she even talk to? God forbid, she did get attacked by a dog or a person, or you know, people. It's their. But I don't know how we, if we could look into that. And who? And she reports directly to Jen now, Jen Ochoa. Yeah. So, is there like a daily log of of you know citations, calls? Because I know there's been some well, so issues at Pistol Creek, and I'm, I don't know if who's responded but I, I i've heard a few people talk to me about it they have a sometimes a tough time with response but I, that, that's why i want to see the so uh, a few times i've asked like yes who are these people yes call me yes. contact me tell me yes date time and they call yeah. i have received nothing okay specifics yeah specifics right, right. got gotcha. you because when 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 people call and leave a message right we get back to them right so I, I, I can't help without knowing. Yeah, I, I get you with that. Specific. Yeah. So. But do we have like, so she's. I'll ask Jen. Yeah. I mean, we're, for the log. she's supervised by Jen. Yeah. She obviously used to be under the police department, which I believe she belongs, but I understand with the past settlement, I guess that can't happen. I don't know if, any, if there's any yeah. way to revisit that, but that's where she should be. That's where every other town pretty much has them there. And for her safety, she certainly should be in the police system. And maybe she is. I, I thought, though, she wasn't. So could we find out? And I would also suggest a GPS on her van. The chief is online. Chief. Oh, if chief, you, yes. If, uh, chief. If hey, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Can do. Chief. Uh, interesting conversations tonight. Better yes. than television. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so question for you. Do you know if our... Uh, animal control officer is on the police radio system? No, I don't think she is. Okay. I know so we've I talked guess... about this in the past too, but yes, you got yes. a unique situation here with how she had an agreement where she doesn't answer to the police department. Right. Um, right. You know, that's, and that's... there's some statutory stuff that you might want to look into. I'm sure attorney D'Onofrio is well aware of these statutes that say that they're supposed to answer to the police, but you have some previous history that, negates that here um yes. our contact with her is very very limited so that, that really begs control. the question yeah that begs the question even more about her safety honestly because if she doesn't can't reach the police by radio I, I know she could call i'm sure and jen ochoa she could call her and i'm not sure an emergency what jen could do i guess call the police I don't see why she wouldn't have a portable radio from the police department for emergency sake, not not for overseeing her. I understand the past agreement, but safety wise, I, she's just on her own. And that's not safe for any employee, especially what she does. You know, I mean, the dog can attack her, a person, the dog owner could attack her. Uh, who Who's she going to contact, you know, without a radio? No, if she has had any safety so issues in the past. Don't know. But but again, always in law enforcement and this type of, you don't want to wait till something happens. You want to be prepared. No, and there's only one. It's one. Are you looking to eliminate coverage over the weekend too while we're on this subject? No, no, we're going to add so weekday evenings. An today. additional person? Yeah, weekday evenings. No, but making person's already there part-time, part make it full-time. So that 
there's no coverage in the evenings. So we she, that goes especially till late in the evening. Yeah. What does she work? Like eight to four? Eight to four. Eight to four. Yeah. So it's eight to four, Monday through Friday, and then you'll have a part time person. Part time person right now works Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, so they'll continue doing continue that. Continue do that and add Wednesday and Thursday, um, perhaps like 11 to 8. So you'll have two full time. Yes. Yeah, 1.5 to four to two full time. Okay, yeah. thank you. Sure. There's a so balance. if I can interject, would the yes. question be that you need two radios? Yeah, well, certainly the, uh, the, the part time. Lady too, yeah. They should both both be able to safety wise have a portable with them. I mean, I mean, you know, if you're laying on the ground somewhere, I mean, sometimes there's no cell service. Uh, the radio would be a safety issue, of nothing else. And again, not not to have her. She's not reporting to you, but yeah. yes, whatever happens. Just you know, because we're dealing with um, the radio issues from the blackout still, and you know, we're dealing with yes. uh, Norcom. And yes. looking at upgrades to the radio system under another subject. So right. I think that we should add the two radios as yes. part of that plan. Because I, I got to be honest, I don't know if we have two additional spare radios to the one or two that we have now. Yeah, you know, and that, Matt, you know, Chief, speaking of radios like that, uh, extra radios. So Berlin Police Department has how many? So Officers are out on patrol. How many? You don't have any spare radios if, God forbid, one gets run over or broken? We have two. You have two spare radios. Yeah. Uh, I guess I would say that's certainly not enough. Uh, in, in my experience, we would want more than that because they do break. They do get, and we know they get dropped. They get run over. They get, God forbid, other things happen to them. But so... Maybe with the new, and no sense buying if we're changing the system. I know we're working on that new system, but I think we probably need to look into, I don't know what that number is, Chief, but I would think more than two would would be helpful. Obviously, to add the animal control folks on it would be. Yeah, I agree um, with that. I think that um, I'm I'm going to Norcom on the uh, 12th in the morning down in Norbertuck or Watertown, wherever they are there, to uh, get the, the final numbers that we've been asking for the past couple of weeks now and okay. you know of course they're always trying to sell you more than what you need so it's it's a of vendor course. but um i'll definitely uh I, I know we were looking at getting more radios than we needed yeah if we had to buy portables i thought the idea was not to buy portables maybe enhance with i think we were looking to get eight more portables but enhance the current one so it would cost us a lot less money so oh, i well, can i can add I can add two to the eight and, and negotiate that. Yeah, that's fine. No, I get that part. Yeah. As long as we have, you know, we had the two for them, they should definitely have one each and, you know, maybe more than a couple. I don't know, maybe five. I don't know what that number is, but I, you know, but, I don't know. My experience, we always were breaking radios and if we didn't have spares, we'd be out of luck in many situations. Oh, oh yeah. I've seen that in my career yeah. too. The other you know. thing is, is if, yeah. if they, if they get radios, I don't believe they have radios. If they get radios, then we have to also we will also have to have them go to um, training for CJIS system security for the criminal justice information system. So they're going to have to do some training okay. on top of their animal control stuff because they're going to be hearing police stuff, and that's right. it's right. got to be secured. So sure, understood. So we'll have to let Jen know that too. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a small price to pay for safety. Yeah. You know, no, I'm not. Guys. I think it's a great idea. I think they should yeah. add radios all along. Yeah. So. Um, Mark, so, we, sh we should do, yeah. like you had mentioned, the GPS as well for the van, just Correct. safety reasons, just like we That's talked about for the VNA nurse. Yes. I mean, it's, you, yes. you just don't know where you're going and what yeah. possibly happens. So. Right. And, and I, you know, Jen, well, I, I, I just don't think Jen, you know, not, I mean, Jen's a great boss and all that, but that that's not who should really be supervising that position. That's, you know, semi law enforcement, but she writes citations. I, well, yes, we have the past agreement. It was a council decision when, when she was rehired, right? Well, it wasn't a, it was a, it was a council decision. Yeah. The, yeah, the count. We should. The, the it was under the PD. Yes, P PD took some disciplinary action. Yes, 
the the community rallied and supported her. Yes. And brought it to the council, and the council said hire her back. And the PD said, no, we're not hiring her back. And then the council said, good, put it under the town manager. And they signed an agreement saying, unless town, the blue collar union, and the ACO, all three agreed, it will stay like that. And we have looked at that agreement nine ways to Sunday with so many different attorneys, it's ironclad. <laughs> That's quite the agreement. Kudos to our past town council. Um, that's that's uh, unheard of, but anyway, it is what it is. It is yes, speaking of changing yes, hours and all of that, I happened to catch an interview with a state rep that has a bill and committee to make town sharing responsibilities easier to take away the roadblocks. Yeah. And he specifically said things like animal control yeah. might, might be effective. So. Like weekends or nights, we might be able to share it one or another. I think we do. Don't don't we share a little bit with uh, maybe New Britain, New Britain, Rocky Cromwell. Hill, or Cromwell. or is it Cromwell. Cromwell, Cromwell, right? I knew we shared, and that's good. Well, and and our pound is next door to New Britain, but we don't share with them. But anyway, right, right. his idea was to take away some of the roadblocks that the towns have, so it may help us with this shortly. Yeah, that's good. I hope that does so. I know, I know, Chief. You work on the radios. Could could we, whatever GPS plan we had planned for the nurses' yeah, vehicles? Well, we have spares now because we are eliminating three positions. Yes, so we could put what? What do we have? Two animal control vans, or just one? Two, two. So we could put those two on their vans. Again, safety wise, and could we see what? I don't know. Is there a, a log or what, you know just? Just to see what what goes on with animal control every day. Citations written, calls. Of animals, feeding animals, watching them. What's that? Taking care of animals. That too. I mean, well, I mean, whatever their day is taken up with. I mean, I, I would I understand that's part of it. I don't know how many. I mean, you know what? Just out of curiosity, because know nothing about it. How many animals are in the shelter on any given day? Is there an average per week, per month, per day? I don't know. You know, I don't know what. What what happens to them? I don't know any of that, honestly. And I feel like I yeah, I don't either. No, I know. I mean, but but I mean, I, I think we we should know when we're looking at making I mean, another another full time officer yeah. before we. I mean, I know, but I don't know. What no, I mean, we know generally what they do, but but I, I think just specifically, and, and I you know, I would imagine before we're going to add a, a you know, not that we don't need one, we probably do to to have coverage, but just to see what goes on in the week, the day, the week, the month. Yeah, I'll ask them to put something together. Yeah. yeah. And and that would be helpful. Right. So so we know. That's my little piece of the of the budget process for for now. There's many more pieces I guess we'll be talking about as the budget goes. Anyway, any other communication from anyone? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and accept our February twentieth minutes. We'll make a, a motion. Accept the February twentieth meeting minutes of the presenter. Thank you. Second on that. Second to that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. So moved. And a motion to adjourn. It's way too early to adjourn. <laughs> motion to adjourn. What do you have? Second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. So moved. Thank you, folks, very much. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Done. We're done. Go, go. We're <laughs> over. Away. We're done, Matt. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Chief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>